whole time. I don't, hold on, this thing won't stay stuck. All right, here we go. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Larry Wellington, a deacon here at United Church of Christ in Boxborough, affectionately, affectionately known as UCCB. Reverend Cindy Maybeck, our bridge minister, called me last night to let me know she tested positive for COVID. So she's not here today. Our prayers are with her for a rapid recovery and a quick return to leading worship. Preaching today will be Reverend Andy Burr. Uh, Reverend Burr is an interim minister. He is uh, re most recently the interim minister of a certain church in Natick that we all know of and <laughs> think highly of. Yes. Anyway, UCCB is an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, fully welcoming all persons of all genders, sexual orientations, and sexual identities. On behalf of the church, I welcome you to worship today, whether you are here in person, watching us live over Zoom or Facebook, or watching us later via YouTube, we are glad you are with us. No matter who you are or where you are in your life's journey, you are welcome here. Following worship today, there will be fellowship in the gathering room, the room immediately behind you. For those of you worshiping online today, Zoom Deacon Laurel is there to welcome you and answer your questions. Please feel free to use chat to communicate, and later on in the service, during the celebrations and concerns, you'll be able to share your concerns and celebrations there. We do have a couple of announcements. The first one is that our um, uh, our opening hymn this morning, the gathering hymn, was written by Art Boyd's uh, father's cousin, who is a, Met a Methodist bishop. Uh, he passed away recently, and we're singing in honor of him. And I think Kelly has an announcement, so. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, great to see you all. And I just got to start with a huge thank you. It's not really why I'm I mean, I just want to say thank you to everyone because yesterday was amazing for those who were present for the fair. I'm not going to steal thunder from others who are going to talk about the fair, but I just want to thank everyone who showed up in all ways, official or unofficial, um, for the fair. Thank you for that. Um, I am here just to talk a little bit about generosity um, and our campaign this year. We've been doing it a little bit differently. There's been a Google form you could complete online to submit, and a number of you already have done that. If so, during the offertory, we have these cute little cards that you can receive from our ushers, or I can help with that, usher team, and you can put that in the offertory plate as a sign of your, of your submission of your financial pledge. If you haven't um, done so online and you want to get a form just to fill out, you can do that as well, and I will be in the gathering room after worship today just to chat with you more about that process or help you submit it online if you'd like however you would like to do that in honor of, and really in, in planning ahead for our 2024 year together. So thank you for that. And with that said, I introduce Mr. Howie, I think is coming up because something happened yesterday that I already said thank you about, but he's the official and Linda official chairs. Thank you for all you've done. Good morning. All right. This works. Hey, it's a good view from up here. So. Anyone who was around here yesterday, we just had an amazing fair, an awesome fair. It was a great gathering of church members, church members, extended family, uh, Foxboro residents, and people from all over. So it was just an awesome fair. I can't thank people who worked enough. I'm not going to try to go through everybody because I would miss it, miss a lot of people. But everyone helped between the setup, the decorations, the tables the money counting, the credit card machines, added treasures, it was an awesome fair. So overall, it looks like we're going to net over $30,000 this year. So it was an amazing fair. So thank you everyone. And now we enter a time of worship with the call to worship.
Good morning, I am also Andy, and please join me in the call to worship. For the bounty of the earth, we give you thanks, O God, and heed your call to care for the earth. For food and water and shelter, we give thanks, O God, and hear your call to serve one another. For e abundant and eternal life, we give you thanks, O God, as we enter this time of worship with praise and thanksgiving. Please rise in body or spirit to join in the gathering hymn, God whose love is reigning o'er us. God, you richly bless us with all that we need, bread from the earth and the bread of heaven, which gives life to the world. Grant us one more thing, grateful hearts to sing your praise in this world and the world to come. Amen. And now please join me, Creator God. Oh, sorry. Yeah. My name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to greet each other online through the Zoom chat box or in person with a wave, bow, or high five. We conclude the passing of the peace with the song of celebration. God's peace be with you. And also with you. Just a very quick announcement, if anyone is interested, on the 17th, we are going to have a Hallelujah Chorus thing during the service. So if anyone would like to join us, please see me. I'll make sure to get you the music. You don't have to have the most wonderful operatic voice in the world. Just if you enjoy singing, come join us during the service, okay?
<clears throat> of all the wonderful things, remarkable things that I've heard about this church, nobody told me that the choir has a men's section that's actually a men's section. <laughs> As Larry said, my name is Andy Burr, uh, Cindy Maybeck, and I have been friends for 25 or 30 years. I was pleased, sort of, I mean, to get her um, call last night, in spite of the COVID, to join you for worship this morning. Uh, I live in Lunenburg with my wife. Her name is Karen Nell Smith, and she is the Associate Pastor for Faith Formation and Outreach at Edwards Church in Framingham. And that's that. <laughs> Our sermon this morning, I've titled Spiritual Dyslexia. And it's based on Jesus' words in the Gospel of Luke. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Creator's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, sell your possessions, and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, just to endear myself to you even more, I'm going to give you a little test. Who recognizes this little ditty? Tra-la-la, 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 rum-tum, tittle-um-tum. Tittle-little, 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 rum-tum, tittle-um. Winnie the Pooh. And that is the song that he sings to himself while he does his stoutness exercises in front of the mirror. And he was singing it to himself as he went walking, is that me? As he went walking through the forest one day visiting. Let's pick up that story midway. Oh, well, then come in said Rabbit to Pooh, finally, after ignoring him for some time. So Pooh pushed and pushed and pushed his way through the hole, and at last he got in. You were quite right, said Rabbit, looking at him all over. It is you. Glad to see you. Who do you think I was? Well, I wasn't sure. You know how it is in the forest. One can't have anybody coming into one's house. One has to be careful. What about a mouthful of something? Pooh always liked a little something at 11 o'clock in the morning, and he was very glad to see Rabbit getting out the plates and mugs. And when Rabbit said, honey or condensed milk with your bread, he was so excited that he said, both. And then, so as to not seem greedy, he added, but don't bother about the bread, please. And for a long time after that, he said nothing until at last, humming to himself in a rather sticky voice, he got up, shook Rabbit lovingly by the paw, and said that he must be going on. Must you, <laughs> said Rabbit, politely. Well, said Pooh, I could stay a little longer if it, uh, if you, and he tried very hard to look in the direction of the larder. As a matter of fact, said Rabbit, I was going out myself directly. Oh, well then, I'll be going on. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, if you're sure you won't have any more. Is there any more? asked Pooh quickly. Rabbit took the covers off the dishes and said, no, that there wasn't. I thought not, said Pooh, nodding to himself. Well, good try, I must be going on. 
So he started to climb out of the hole. He pulled with his front paws and he pushed with his back paws and in a little while his nose was out in the open again and then his ears and then his front paws and then his shoulders and then oh help said Pooh I better go back oh bother said Pooh I shall have to go on I can't do either said Pooh oh help and bother now by this time rabbit wanted to go for a walk too and finding the front door full he went out by the back door and came around to Pooh and looked at him are you stuck no said Pooh carelessly I'm just resting and thinking and humming to myself here give us a paw who stretched out a paw and rabbit pulled and pulled and pulled. Ow! cried Pooh. You're hurting. The fact is, said rabbit, you're stuck. It all comes, said Pooh crossly, of not having front doors big enough. It all comes, said Rabbit sternly, of eating too much, I thought at the time, said Rabbit, only I didn't like to say anything, said Rabbit, that one of us was eating too much, said Rabbit, and I knew it wasn't me. I shall go and fetch Christopher Robin. That Winnie the Pooh story has stuck with me excuse me, because my mother used to read it to me when I was a little boy. And this next story that I'm about to share has stuck with me because as a preacher, I'm always on the lookout for good sermon materials. And I filed this one right at the very top of the pile. It's about five years old, and it's a story from USA Today. A few weeks back, the long-awaited iPhone 10 was released. A news report in USA Today states consumers turned out in droves over the weekend to buy Apple's most expensive phone ever, the iPhone 10, and in less than three days, it was as good as sold out. In a spot check of availability, USA Today could find units only available for same-day retail pickup in Tacoma and Spokane, Washington. An earlier check on Sunday found it sold out in 20 big cities. Consumer enthusiasm vanquished any doubts that Apple would be able to persuade buyers to spend a thousand dollars on up for a state-of-the-art phone it's most expensive yet and that was just the thousand dollars just the starting price and it was unavailable New York Boston Chicago Denver Houston Dallas Minneapolis Milwaukee San Antonio on and on online it was three to four weeks for delivery. Lines were stronger than we've seen in years, said some Apple executive. Lots of the consumers were buying two each, either to resell or to give as gifts, and ads for iPhone 10 units inflated retail prices from $1,500 to $5,000. One guy in the article said, get this. It's better to be online than be last and not get what you really want. It's better to be online than be last and not get what you really want. Can you even imagine? Can you even imagine thinking that you need something so badly, that you need some thing so badly, you'd be not just willing, but eager 
to stand in line for 24 hours and then pay at least a thousand dollars for that thing what those folks have is a trust problem a two-part trust problem the first part of their trust problem is where do they place their trust where do they place their trust they've placed it in the new iphone 10 believing that it will stave off their anxiety if they just have the right stuff, the newest stuff, whatever the stuff our culture tells us will make us safe and feel less anxious. The newest iPhone, the newest fashion, the latest retirement savings vehicle, the biggest bank balance, the biggest 401k. The second part of their trust problem is perhaps their biggest. Their belief that they can quell their anxiety about the future all by themselves. Effectively believing that they're their own savior. If I can just get this one thing, I'll be okay. Now that strategy works, we all know, until the next best thing comes along. Where is our trust placed? Who will meet our needs? <clears throat> Classic children's literature, commercialism crazies. Let's look for a moment at our scripture lesson. Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Creator's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, I don't know about you, but I have always found that last line sort of silly. That is, until I heard my colleague and noted preacher, Martin Copenhaver, calling us out with a case of spiritual dyslexia. In this case, he says, we've somehow reversed what Jesus is really saying. We've reversed it in our minds and now believe our mixed up version not only to be true, but that we're living according to the gospel's call on our lives. Of course, we'll put our treasure where our heart is. I love my wife. I buy her good stuff. I love my family. I make sure we have a nice home. I'm concerned about my retirement. I compulsively overload my 401k. But that's not what Jesus is saying at all. Actually, he's saying just the opposite. What he's telling us this morning, the wrap-up Sunday of the generosity season here in Boxborough, what he's telling us is just the opposite of what we think we hear. Jesus is saying, get this, Jesus is saying that your heart follows your money. 
that your heart follows your money. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If you want to really love something, even if you don't love it already, if you really want to love something, start putting money there. Then your heart will follow, and you'll begin loving it. That's what Jesus is telling his disciples, us. So this spiritual dyslexia with which so many of us seem to struggle causes us to be stuck on our spiritual journeys. To be stuck between a life in the spirit and a life in the mall. The fact is, said Rabbit, you're stuck. It all comes, said Pooh crossly, of not having front doors big enough. It all comes, said Rabbit sternly, of eating too much. I thought at the time, said Rabbit, only I didn't like to say anything, said Rabbit, that one of us was eating too much, said Rabbit, and I knew it wasn't me, he said. Or, it's better to be online than be last and not get what you really want. How many of us feel stuck because we have too much stuff, because we've eaten too much honey, because we've taken more than we need, because we think we need more, because we think there won't be enough for me. Our scripture lesson this morning is a call to trust. A call to trust, which those of us like me, who have some pretty strong control issues, is very scary. It's a call to trust in God when Jesus says to his disciples, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your creator's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, the kingdom, not the Xbox, not the vacation home, not the bulging retirement account, or in my case, boxes and boxes and boxes of Trisket Thins, two for five bucks at Hannaford this week. For it is your creator's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Some of you may remember the Reverend Dr. Nancy Taylor. She was the uh, minister and president of the conference for a while. She says, give until it feels good. Give until it feels good. How many of us feel stuck because we have too much stuff? Because we've eaten too much honey. Stuck in life. Stuck in your relationship with God. Stuck in the same old spot on your faith journey. Stuck gnawing the same old bone over and over again. Faithful giving, participating in this church's generosity campaign is a way to get unstuck. Faithful giving and being truly, truly generous. Remembering that each person's generous is different. And it's not about the amount of money. Because one person's generosity is another person's vacation home. My prayer for you is this. If you yearn for a deeper relationship with God, 
if you yearn for a deeper relationship with others, if you have been longing your entire life for a deeper relationship with yourself, if you're tired of being stuck, then make your generous pledge to the church. And if that's done faithfully, and wholeheartedly, without an ounce of guilt. Without an ounce of guilt, I guarantee you, it will change your vision and your hearing and your life. I've done it. I know. Jesus says to each of us, and all of us here this morning, do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your Creator's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions. Give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus wouldn't lie. May it be so for each of us. Amen. Prayers of the people. I think most of us come here to worship this morning with concerns and celebrations on our hearts, uh, prayer requests, joys, everyday things that people want brought before the congregation. Who has those kinds of things? Others. Some of you may know that uh, my daughter's house burned to the ground six months ago, and uh, she had no insurance, so uh, she had to rebuild from scratch. And uh, yesterday, the furnace went in, and they are now living in their new home. So, uh, I, just a huge uh, thank you to the community Never forget the musician. Huge, painful transitions. I'm sorry. I'll just go back, Owen. Janet mentioned the fair. The fact that there was our 90th Merry Christmas yeah. fair is just amazing. 90th. Speaking, speaking with people in the community were just awed by that number. You know, this community has just been so supportive. Sounds amazing. I, I want to celebrate my Aunt Marguerite's 100th birthday on Tuesday. Wow. My dad and a twin sister. And uh, it's hard to believe she was born in 1923. And uh, she lives outside of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And uh, so 
really celebrate. Uh, we, I couldn't be there, but I did spend some time with her this summer. So wonderful, very special. a gift. So Aunt Marguerite's hundredth. Gina, did I get that right? No. Ginny, I was pretty close. Continued prayers of healing for Bruce. So, um, in addition to having to deal with me for my wife, she has been having a lot of trouble with uh, her parents. Her mother had a small stroke about a week ago, mm. and that um, really put her mental capacity in a downward spiral. So she's getting transferred into hopefully long term. Another terrible transition. I want to keep looking back here because this is where I've messed up. <laughs> Any others? Holding all of those things on our hearts and those that have remained unspoken, would you please join your hearts with mine in prayer? Gracious and generous God, creator and giver of all that is good, we thank you for our many blessings. We acknowledge that all we have is from you. We offer you thanks and praise for the beauty of the earth, our work, our family, our loved ones, and all the gifts that we have been given. You are always with us. In each dark hour, you are here. In each bright hour, you are here. Blessed by your grace, may we show gratitude by sharing what we have been given. By serving our siblings, we serve you. We remain ever grateful for your constant love, the gift of your son, Jesus, and the presence of your Holy Spirit with us. Protect and guide us on our journey. We seek to be your faithful stewards. Amen. One celebration I should have said before is the um, offerings and donations this congregation made in support of the um, relief of the Haiti families. I came and picked them up, the donations. Oh my goodness. Just stunning. Just stunning is not the right word. Overwhelming. Over, it took my entire car to fit the whole thing except with room enough for Wheezy, my dog. When I was a little boy, my mother said to me and my three siblings, often, those to whom much have been given, much will be expected. And when I went to seminary and found out that those were Jesus' words, it scared me. Those to whom much have been given, much will be expected. I hate that. <laughs> Let us receive the morning's offering.
Please join your hearts with mine in prayer. For the wondrous gift of life, we are thankful, O God. Your generous outpouring of grace reminds us of the fruitful life we are called to bear. May these gifts of time and labor, therefore, embody our desire to share and contribute to your coming commonwealth among us. Amen. And now, as we leave this holy space, may you love God so much that you love nothing else too much. And may you fear God enough that you fear nothing else at all. Go in peace. Amen.